What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out how Adam will book Cody Rhodes return to WWE. This should be a good one, man. He is he's pretty spot on with his his booking decisions, man. I am looking forward to this video. This should be great. Appreciate all love and support. A dyed blonde figure this, in wrestling slowly chipping away at his own popularity through obnoxious self-unawareness and transparent grandstanding. It should be no surprise that I like Cody Rhodes quite a lot. So much so that in fact, Simon, could you? Pop a neck tattoo on there, Not please. The neck tattoo. Now I'm complete. So wrestling's <laughs> weird, mm. right? I'm going to have to go into the background straight away to try and make any sort of sense of this. There is just history bloody everywhere on this one. Cody Rhodes is the son of the late, great Dusty Rhodes, a legendary figure in NWA history, especially in the predecessor to WCW, Jim Crockett Promotions. Dusty was an amazing talker who had an iconic draw, which I won't attempt, an unparalleled connection to the common man, a huge amount of booking influence and a tendency for creating things like Starcade war games and really annoying match finishes where a babyface wins in order to get a big pop, but then that decision's instantly reversed by a technicality. I hate Dusty finishes so much. His sons, Dustin and Cody, are mm. both wrestlers. Dustin, of course being most famous for being one half of the King of the Road match with Blacktop Bully Uncensored 1995 and also Goldust and AEW. And speaking of AEW, Cody Rhodes competed in WWE for 10 years, signing mm -hmm. in 2006, white meat babyface with Hardcore Holly, joined Legacy, became dashing, became undashing, redebuted the classic intercontinental title design, mm -hmm. formed Team Road Scholars who broke up, he teamed with his brother, had an amazing match with the Shield at Battleground 20. That match they had with the Shield was oh, easily one of the best matches Cody had in WWE. That match was so good. That's so good. 13, WWE then capitalized on this huge Rhodes family storyline, how important the Rhodes family was, especially the name Rhodes by changing his name to Stardust. Yep. And giving him the gimmick of, well, I'm boiling it down here, but cosmic pervert. He teamed with his brother, they broke up, didn't really feud. He teamed with the Ascension, and then after pleading with WWE Creative to end the Stardust gimmick, please, for six months, mm -hmm. in May 2016, Cody requested his release from WWE and set on a magical journey of self-reinterpretation. Genuinely, it should be taught in every wrestling school in the world. Cody legitimately went from undesirable to ungoddamn deniable, mm -hmm. immediately putting himself in a high-profile series of matches with Kurt angle one of which took place in wcpw he worked tna <laughs> new japan ring of honor in a great heel run became part of bullet club tried like come took over bullet club really in a sort of civil war era literally everything a wrestler could do to make their mark short of founding their own promotion and then on march 16th 2017 dave Meltzer, look at him look at how silly he is he <laughs> tweeted a response to at the wwe guy on twitter who asked do you think roh can ever sell out an arena with 10k plus fans the response was not anytime soon to which cody responded i'll take that bet the following year cody the young bucks and ring of honor collaborated on what will probably be known as the most significant indie show of all time all in which sold over 10,000 tickets the first non wwe or wcw show to do so in 15 years That's the incredible. runaway success of the show led to the formation of all elite wrestling mm -hmm. in 2019 and in may 2019 two years almost to the day after big dave's big tweet and cody took that bet AEW held their first official pay-per-view double oh, or nothing, nothing. because because bet although cody was really more of an obnoxious prick heel than face in the early days of AEW. by the time AEW's weekly show dynamite launched cody and kenny omega were the top two baby faces in the company kenny the workhorse and cody the emotion a self-appointed mm -hmm. face of the revolution smashing thrones with sledgehammers cutting the promos to send the fans home happy and doing earnest black hat white hat stories filled with emotion and more importantly blood Yep. loads of blood Lots for a blood. time the roads were paved with gold oh, man. and know. then cody began to be involved in decisions that started to seem tone deaf didn't mm -hmm. gel with his real life position in the company an executive vice president booking himself to go over a hot new talent like lance archer that led the fans to inform cody that he might want to levec his privilege after <laughs> distancing himself from the rest of the elite the nightmare family generally 
being a bit rubbish. That whole America versus the world storyline with Anthony Agogo that really didn't play with the AEW fans because AEW fans don't really care about flags that much. The bloom fell off the roads. Every road has its I'm not doing scorn. This fans began to boo Cody, mm -hmm. who steadfastly refused to turn heel, almost seeming to enjoy trolling the fans about it. It really stuck out as AEW's first major instance of not listening to its fans. Yeah. Brandy, his wife, would be a conceited heel, having bad segments of plenty, but Cody just walked chin up through the boos until a few weeks ago when the shock announcement that one of the founders of AEW, who gave the company their first five-star match, couldn't come to terms with the promotion he created mm -hmm. over a new contract. He left and now it was all but a done deal that the face of the revolution was defecting back to the establishment that was WWE, a company that ruined NXT because of AEW, that counter-programmed ruthlessly against AEW, but that also steadfastly refused to acknowledge AEW mm -hmm. in any way. So how the f are we gonna do the just and here's the thing, man. I, I'm still, I'm not a hundred percent sold that he's really going to do this, because once again, it just does not make sense for him to go back when he was adamant to leave. And it's a different. This is a different situation. He was adamant to leave to create something better for himself and others. If that makes any sense. I get it. Some people come back to WWE after, WWE after years. You know, it could be some type of situation, water on the bridge. But this is different from that. This is someone that really didn't get the push that he was hoping to get and was wanting a gimmick change and it never, they didn't want to do it. So he had to build himself up outside of WWE. And not only that, he built himself up and it ended up starting a new company to compete with. With that same company you just left. Like, it's it's just wild to even think that he would go back. That's insane to me. Let me have a go. Good luck, my guy, because this is a interesting one. No, but seriously, how are we going to do this? Because Jesus, f try and look at it from all sides. Cody Rhodes in WWE is f fascinating, but in a way yeah. that WWE are seemingly incapable of addressing and exploiting to its full. Cody Rhodes founded the first legitimate competition to WWE since WCW closed. Yeah. He smashed a symbol of Triple H with a symbol of Triple H. And you know he's going to come back and, you know, for one promo, one promo, they'll address the fact that he's been away and been busy, but he's come home because yeah. he couldn't achieve his dreams over there. And that, you know, people will chant AEW and go, oh, is that being AEW? And Cody will smile and he says, but that was then, this is now, and I'm back forever and then he'll win the u.s title and defend it on the pre-show of SummerSlam. <laughs> i really want to be wrong about that i really do i the hope you are thing too is that he is the first major defector from the promised land but mm -hmm. wwe can't frame it that way because it's, it's promoting AEW w, yeah. as the promised land AEW acknowledges that it's part of a wider industry it uses that wider context to make its storylines feel a bit more realistic and resonant with its super fans although they do do it a bit too much sometimes they feel petty wwe doesn't do that mm -hmm. at all especially since NXT changed to a children's tea party. Yeah. WWE exists in this hermetically sealed world where it's the only game in town mm -hmm. because anything less would be a backtrack from the narrative they wrote for themselves when WCW closed. Sure, CM Punk got to say cool stuff and name drop Ring of Honor, but he didn't f go to Ring of Honor. But mm -hmm. by and large, WWE has a total disregard of fellow promotions and it makes WWE feel a bit alien, cold and inhumane like Ollie. What people will want me to do here is book a storyline where Cody invades WWE, talks non-stop about how much better AEW is, blows a whistle, then suddenly the Undisputed Era burst out of a f***ing cake to start kicking people in the leg really hard. And while in real life, this is a supercharged, worlds collide kind of opportunity mm -hmm. we never thought we'd see, coming up with something that would never, ever happen, just doesn't feel like it's engaging. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. That AEW evasion angle would be probably the coolest thing ever. It would, it would, it, oh my God, it would be fucking lit. But we know it, that will never, ever happen. You know what Vince would, Vince would have a goddamn, I'm not even going to say that. Nah, I, I don't want to even put that in. 
I'm not just trying to put that out there. Vince would lose his shit if that was to happen, bro. It, even if someone brought that up in a board meeting, in a meeting to come up with creative storylines, he, he'd probably fire that person on the spot. Like, that would never happen. Would it be cool? Yes. Will it happen? No. And with this brief, I've always tried to do things that might happen. So I've come up with something that hopefully serves both masters. It gives Cody the kind of motivation that, you know, he and specifically only him would have, not just babyface template number four, something that takes the last six years into account, the historical context of his family name, his accomplishments, but also a story that WWE could tell and that could only be told within WWE. Like I think I have, who knows? I'm doing my best. Put the hey. neck tattoo on me again. Put it on. And we're going to yeah. start with, and I, I want to get this right out of the way first. I, stay with me. Okay. Cody's WrestleMania opponent is going to be Shane McMahon. Look, I know. I know. <laughs> he, he already knew. I was about to turn off the video, man. I, what? He knows. He knows, man. He knows a lot of us was about to instantly just like turn this damn video off. What? Oh, no, I know. Stop it. I know what happened at the Rumble. I know he's, he's such a weird man. But look, this, like the Fast and Furious saga, this has to be all about family. Also, I filmed this on Friday, 24th of February. If Cody debuts the Monday before this comes out, it's better than this. I'm going to get an actual neck tattoo. We'll run a poll on our Patreon. And whatever you pick, I'll have that tattooed on my neck. That oh, is wow. an absolute promise. And I... It's definitely not something I'll cut out of the video if he actually did debut on Monday. Did he debut on Monday, Simon? Good or <laughs> delete as applicable. We begin on <laughs> Raw March 14th. Why March 14th? Because that Raw emanates from Jacksonville, Florida, home of mm. Daly's Place, the spiritual home of AEW and its permanent residence throughout the pandemic. Probably a bit more likely for the average fan in Jacksonville to know or care about Cody's non-WWE side piece in Jacksonville. So Raw begins and then suddenly, wow, it's totally <laughs> smoking. No, I'm kidding. Although that song is really good. Adrenaline inside my soul. I am Cody. And Rose. <laughs> Cody comes to the ring. He wants to do a big gesture like, I don't know, kiss the mat, but please don't do that, Cody. He walks into the ring. He sits in a chair, dyed blonde hair, woof, and woof. he <laughs> waits for the inevitable AEW chance to die down. He sits down in the chair, takes a microphone, and simply says, I want to speak to Vince McMahon. And mm. he waits. After about a minute, AEW chance, etc., Vince comes down and says, Hey, Cody. Welcome back to a real company. Yup, I can see Vince saying some shit like that. That sounds about right. Must be nice to see all this production value again. Cody says, cute. I'm going to cut to the chase. I am back for my dad's stuff. See, while I was away, rebuilding who I was, building, if you can't say it, I will, all elite wrestling. Oh, man, that would be cool. That would be cool. Chance. For the longest time, I did that without my father's name. I was just Cody. Why? Because you own that name. The name Rhodes was owned by Vince McMahon. My father's name, the name he crafted in the NWA, in Jim Crockett Promotions, in WCW, the name he gave me belonged to you. I took that name back, and I'm back for everything else. And after all, Vince, you know a thing or two about being gifted things from your father. Vince says, mm. no one talks about my father, you little pissant. You want it all? No chance in hell. <laughs> then Vince leaves, Cody tells him to come back, but then here comes the money. Here we go. Out comes Shane wearing a dark suit rather than his baseball shirt. He walks down with a serious face. He walks right up to Cody Road. He fronts to Cody. Cody low blows him, hits him with the crossroads. And while Shane is lying face down, Cody takes a can of yellow spray paint and on the back of Shane's dark jacket, sprays yellow polka dots. Mm. Next week, a confrontation between Shane and Cody. Cody proposes a match at WrestleMania. If he wins, WWE signs over to him everything his dad created. War Games, the Dusty Classic, Starcade, mm. the right. Rhodes name, the music, all of it. I know. Dusty didn't create the Dusty guy, but you know what I mean. Cody yeah. talks about while he was gone from the company, he saw WWE bring back Starcade. All these treasured Rhodes memories. Shane mm. refuses, telling him no, and he's not going to get it by threatening Vince. He says, I'm sorry that your dad is gone, but mine isn't. And he owns that legacy fair and square. Cody responds, yeah, my dad's gone, but at least he told me he loved me before he went. 
mm. and meant it. Mm. He just keeps needling Shane about why Shane left WWE all those years ago because he knew that all this would never be his. It still mm. won't be his. Vince would rather burn it down than pass it on. This is good. This is so good. He, he got, I will say, Adam knows how to book. <laughs> I don't know why he's not hired by WWE, but I like this. Gives a sense of realism. I like this, man. This is nice. Maybe he would pass it on if only he had a son he could be proud of. Shane mm. attacks Cody, smashes him with the microphone, keeps hitting him over and over and over. He heads under the ring, comes back with a bag. He shouts, you want the match? You got it. But if you lose, we own you. We own your name, your legacy, and you'll spend the rest of your contract wearing this. He opens the bag, dumps Star Stardust's gear uh, on Cody's prone body. On the go-home Raw before WrestleMania, that would be nice. if Cody wins, he gets the rights of everything to do with the roads in perpetuity. However, if he loses, they belong to WWE. Cody then mentions that in honor of Dusty's classics with superstar Billy Graham, Tully Blanchard, Shane versus Cody, because we are in Dallas after all, will be a Texas mm -hmm. death match. At Mania, the two men go hell for leather or as much as Shane can. He can do a little jump off something if he likes, fill your boots. Vince even walks down to try and interfere. He doesn't wrestle Pat McAfee because that's weird. He yeah. eats a punch to the head from Cody. He falls back and lands on a bunch of officials at ringside as safely as possible. And finally, Cody chokes out Shane McMahon with a Texas bull rope to win the match and regain the Rhodes family okay. intellectual property. In the match between Reigns and Lesnar in the main event, by the way, Heyman chooses Roman and helps his tribal chief and mine win both the WWE and Universal Championship. As it should be. So, we've done my little thing. We've had our, we've had my little match, which is more about, ooh, narrative parallels. Aren't these some rich to nuanced themes about family, pride, and living up to expectations? Isn't there scope for some deft emotional moments as both men fight for their father's pride and all that bollocks? Now let's give you a match that you all actually want. You people. Mm -hmm. WWE WrestleMania backlash. Mm -hmm. WWE backlash to WWE WrestleMania the backlash. Cody Rhodes <laughs> versus Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. On the Raw after Mania, Cody comes out to celebrate his father's name. Seth interrupts to remind Cody that Dusty may have given Cody a start in this business, but there's one thing that Dusty never gave Cody, and that was a world championship, pointing to the Tron, a picture of Dusty Rhodes handing Seth Rollins mm. the NXT championship, the first NXT championship. So really, he asks Cody, when it comes down to it, who did your father respect more? The mm. whole thing isn't just gonna be bringing up Dusty every two minutes, by the way, but yeah. this is off the back of Mania. Dusty's a huge emotional link between these two performers, so he's definitely a big part of the story right now. The two wrestle at the backlash to the backlash to the thing that's just begun. Seth Rollins spends the whole time cheating to get ahead, jaw jacking about how he's the champion son that Dusty never had. The ref goes down, Seth throws Cody onto the outside. He runs against the ropes, he rebounds, goes for a suicide dive when Cody hits him with a mm. sledgehammer shot. Just stands over him, looks at the sledgehammer and gives it a little kiss. He rolls <laughs> Seth back into the ring, wow. hits a crossroads, one, two, I like that. three. Also on the show, Roman Reigns wrestles two matches, one for the Universal Championship against Drew McIntyre and one against Edge for the WWE Championship. Mm. Roman cheats to retain against Drew in the opener, but loses the WWE Championship to Edge in the main event after Drew runs in and returns the favor with a Claymore mm. kick, setting up another match between Roman and Drew at another pay-per-view. Next up, I've shot. I can see that happening. He will drop the WWE Championship. I don't want him to eat a pin like that, but that's the only way they're going to be able to separate the titles. That's exactly what's going to happen. He'll try to do double duty. He'll lose the WWE Championship. Fooled around some pay-per-views from the current 2022 schedule. I do hope you don't mind. I also don't care. Instead of July, the June pay-per-view will be Money in the Bank. That'll take place in June. Cody and Seth continue feuding into that show with both men entering the Money in the Bank ladder match, casting mm -hmm. memories back to the early 2010s. In 2013, Cody almost 
won the briefcase. It was kind of a big coming out match for him, but he was betrayed by Damien Sandow. And of course, in 2014, the year after, Seth won the thing, so plenty of history there. Yeah. Cody Rhodes wins the briefcase, becomes Mr. Money in the Bank. Okay. He truly is ungoddamn deniable. The next month's pay-per-view takes place on Sunday, July 3rd, the day before Independence Day. And to celebrate, WWE decide to rekindle as a main roster show, The Great hey, American okay. I'm, Bash. I'm great. On I'm, Raw, Cody I'm okay with that, bringing back The Great American Bash. Announces that he's cashing in the briefcase for a shot at the WWE Championship at The Great American Bash. After all, it's one of his dad's crowning achievements to beat Ric Flair for the 10 pounds of gold at the same event in 1986. Okay. Edge and Cody trade some shooty poo pot shots at each other. Edge telling Cody knows exactly what it's like to cash in that briefcase. He tells him he's a fool for announcing it in advance. He should go back to Florida where he can pretend he's a main event hero. Cody says thanks. He will head down to Florida soon. And while he's there, he'll be sure to say hello to Edge's good buddy, Christian. At mm. the event, Rhodes and Edge have a heated face versus face battle when the ref goes down and suddenly Charlotte Flair runs down to the ring. She clatters Edge with the WWE Championship. Edge staggers back into a crossroads. Cody Rhodes hits it. One, two, three, becomes the new WWE Champion. He and Charlotte stand face to face in the center of the ring and they shake hands. At the same event where Dusty Rhodes beat his hated rival Ric Flair, their children unite to form a merger between the two great wrestling families. It's not a romantic mm. bond, oh, just no. an alliance to make sure that both wrestlers get what they feel that'd be, that'd be they cool. deserve. Their partnership is called The Birthright. Together, they both vow to create a lasting dynasty in WWE. Also, absolutely turn Cody Rhodes heel because yeah. he's a wonderful heel and also gestures vaguely at AEW. This leads to Cody Rhodes versus John Cena mm. at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship. Couple of reasons for this. Both men are keenly aware what it's like to be the face of their company and for the diehard fans of that company to look at that face and go, you know what? What else do you have? Also, Cena will be competing for the WWE Championship, a world title, attempting to break Ric mm. Flair's record, which would sit there. He is, he's doing a lot of tie-ins. This, this is some, this is some good, this is what I like, booking that ties into real life situations. It all makes sense. I like this, I'm loving this. Very uneasily with Charlotte. Also, their ideologies clash in a nicely thematic way. The birthright feel their owed greatness. Seen as all about earning it through hustle, loyalty, and the third one. Also, Cena <laughs> bloody loves a bit of shooting, doesn't he? Yeah. So hearing John Cena give no f**ks and name drop AEW a bunch, that'd be really fun. I'd enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Naturally, at SummerSlam, Cody and Charlotte cheat to beat Cena with Charlotte passing Cody the sledgehammer while the ref's back is turned. Bam, Bink. one, two, three. Can also have Cody assist Charlotte in beating Ronda Rousey in a WrestleMania rematch. So both Flair and Rhodes hold championship gold. It is an ultimate alliance. The mega powers, the birthright. The rest of this booking is just gonna be a fun few ideas I had for extra bits to pass the time until Mania, where we'll end this story. Have Cody decree that instead of Hell in a Cell, WWE are gonna do War Games. I like that idea. Them doing war games instead of Hell in a Cell. I like that. I like that. I love that. War games on the main, main roster. roster. Cody yep. finally gets to be in the match his dad created. Thought these teams might be fun. Cody Rhodes teams with Imperium because Walter knows a few things about having his name changed against his will. And mm -hmm. also, without the neck tap, Cody does look distinctly German. So that that adds up. Those guys face a team of Rollins, Balor, Champa, and Owens, all former NXT champions. And NXT essentially appropriated the former NXT's relationship with Dusty, etc. Yeah. Also, I really want to see Walter jump off a War Games cage. Can I? <laughs> Please. Still calling them water, man. Cody versus Roman have a December WWE pay per view be Starcade instead mm. of TLC, headlined by a Rhodes defending a world championship. Cody and Charlotte treat the night as their own personal homecoming. In the main event, Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles. And it's in this match that Triple H makes his long awaited return to the ring, smashing Cody in the face with a sledgehammer, costing him the WWE championship. I've been a bit 
wary about putting Triple H in this story because obviously yeah. it's health, but hopefully yeah, this health. is enough time for him to rehab and get back on his feet. This leads, of course, to Cody Rhodes versus, versus Triple, Triple H. H at WrestleMania 39. Sledgehammer versus Sledgehammer, mm. Triple H versus Triple H, career versus career, which Triple H can lose. Or maybe even Cody can lose and go back to AEW. Yeah. That wouldn't that be fun? It just he moves between the two, making each promotion feel more valuable. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Anyway, no, no, Triple H should, should lose. Yeah, he definitely should lose. Should, yeah, he probably should. And that is my booking of Cody Rhodes in WWE. Set up a kind of faction like for him, give him a reason for being there, which makes sense beyond, you know, I wanted more money than AEW were willing to give me. So story about hitting the chair stuff you know it's a, it's a bit better than that it actually addresses stuff specifically to do with cody rather than just hey it's a famous person you know who's coming back to wwe for a hot minute and it it it, it has some aew stuff mm -hmm. you know it, it you can't ignore it but also it's not just mentioning aew all the time because honestly just constantly name dropping the other place as we've seen in AEW it just it makes your own company feel a little small time sometimes so that's a year in the life of Cody Rhodes in WWE uh, what would you do differently if you would let me hey man I enjoyed this booking I definitely did enjoy this I, I like majority of the the points that he made man this uh, I like them bringing up the family stuff don't have him come back for some bullshit reason. If he's going to come back, you got to push him. You have to. It, it doesn't make sense for him for him to come back to be a jobber. It got to make sense. It got to elevate elevate a lot of what's going on. You feel me? And I like that they, you know, they bring up the family situation. I love that. I, the sense of realism there. I'm all for it, man. If it makes sense. If they're going to if he comes back to really be doing the same shit he was doing before then what was the point because then it comes it looks like you just did it for the money but if you want to come back to create your own narrative the way you wanted it to be in wwe do it go ahead and do it i'm, I'm all for it so if it works but if they bury him because he went to another company then don't don't even waste your time bro don't even waste your time so Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys agree with Alan's booking? And uh, if there's anything you would have changed, what would you have changed? But I appreciate all love and support. Row 2, Sandy K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.